A lot of people are going to tell you what to do in property, where to buy, how to buy, funding, all of that stuff, type of stuff. Not many people are going to tell you what not to do. And what not to do is as important, if not more important, than what to do. So in this video, I'm going to share with you what not to do. So six things that I think you ought not to do. And if you don't do these, by the way, you're going to grow quicker because you're going to do the things which are the exact opposite, which are going to be really good for you. There's a lot of people out there who will tell you what to do when it comes to property. So where to buy, how to buy, how to fund finance, do developments, all of those wonderful things. But there's not enough people telling you what not to do. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the things that I've done, which having looked back now, I shouldn't have done in the hope that it's going to help you avoid those mistakes, errors, failings, shortcomings, call them whatever you like. I just call them lessons, by the way, because we learn stuff and we improve and we move on. So the first one, which is really important, and I think people sometimes don't value this as much as they should, is training. So if you're into property, or if you're looking to get into property, have a budget and spend some time on training yourself because this is gonna pay you the best return by far. So I knew quite a bit about property before I went into training. And once I went through the training, I thought, God, I should have done this 15 years ago because had I started then, where would I be now type of thing. And I'm sure sometimes you have that thought uh, in your mind as well. But like the old saying goes, the best time to plant a tree was 50 years ago. So the second best time is now. So you just make hay while the sun shines. Uh, but training is really going to help you in many different ways. It's going to, in the room, you learn from uh, the expert or the speaker, but you also see people around you and you make contacts, uh, opens your mind. You, and as you see the people around you, they're ordinary folk just like you and me, and hopefully that'll give you confidence. Well, if, if he can do it, if she can do it, if they can do it, so can I type of thing. And people share different ideas, clues, strategies, uh, techniques, tips, tools, uh, which kind of helps you to see things differently because I could tell you something five times in a similar way, but somebody else might tell you the same thing in a very different way and that might click. So that type of stuff really helps and is important. So I'd say spend to some extent as much money as you can on training and don't worry, there's no sales pitch here. I'm not selling you any training courses. I'm just sharing you my experience. Uh, of how I've benefited from training. But obviously, if you've got no money, then you can't spend money on training. But if you have got some, spend as some of it on training and spend it regularly. Uh, and it's going to really pay you a fantastic dividend over many, many years. But whatever you do, don't just go in alone because you're going to make a lot of mistakes. It's going to cost you a lot of money. And in the end, you're going to think, well, <sighs> property probably isn't the best thing. However, with training and support, it's going to be a game changer for you. Number two is using your emotions. So way too many people say, I wouldn't live in that property, so I'm not investing in it. Well, you aren't your tenant. You're not going to live there. I'm not saying buy crappy properties, by the way. I'm saying buy nice properties, do them up nicely, make them look good. But it's a business decision. So you've got houses there which you rent out to people. It's a bit like, let's say, being a shopkeeper and you've got some bread there that you're selling. That might not, not be the bread that you like eating or you're going to eat, but you just stock it there because that's what your customers want. Simple as that. You can use that example in any other business uh, that you can think of. So don't try and be your tenant and don't use emotion to say, oh, I want some lovely property because I've, I've got to fall in love with it before I buy it. Well, your tenants might not love that property as much as you do, so be very rational. Alongside that, what's really important is, depending on the type of property strategy you're in, have some kind of an appraisal system linked with your KPIs or your KPIs or your metrics or whatever you're looking for in terms of return uh, and what you're looking for in terms of uh, cash flow and uh, future appreciation or any of the numbers and metrics that you want to measure because everybody wants to measure different things. 
and then appraise the deal and see if it fits in with that those parameters. So for example, if you wanted uh, a return on investment of say 7% and you see a property giving you 3 or 4%, then say, nope, this doesn't work for me because it doesn't fit in line with my metrics, I'll move on. All too often people end up buying property uh, that they don't really appraise properly and later on find out this doesn't quite work for me or they buy property just because they like it and then soon realize they've spent a lot of money on a property which they're going to rent out, which doesn't really to turn out to be a good enough investment or give them a good enough return and they could have used those funds to buy, let's say, two properties or possibly three properties. So it's important you act rationally and logically when making those decisions with some kind of a proper system and process to appraise those deals to make sure they work for you. Number three, buying properties that give you a low return. I see this all too often. People say, oh, I've really bought this really cheap property, let's say, somewhere in the northeast, for example, uh, and I paid 50,000 pounds for it, and this person, let's say, is based in Cambridgeshire, where I am, and they say a property's in Cambridgeshire, the average price is 250 grand, no, the northeast is so much cheaper. But that's fine, it might, be, it might be so much cheaper, but is the return good enough? See, I'm not too bothered about whether I pay, say, half a million pounds or a million pounds for a property, for example, or if I pay 50 grand for it, if the return is what I want it to be, then I'm looking at 10% per annum. If the return's there at 10%, I'm happy to buy it. I'm cool with it, because it hits my number. That's my number. Uh, if it doesn't hit my number, and you think, oh, well, this is cheap, or cheaper, or it costs less than what cost properties cost in a, another region, I am not interested. Uh, I just want to buy it. I'd rather have one property for a million pounds that gives me a 10% return than have 20 properties for 50 grand each, somewhere in the northeast or wherever these properties are, which give me a lower return and are gonna give me more headache. So make sure you, the properties are giving you the kind of return that you want. So work out your end number. Let's say if it's 50 grand a year, 100 grand a year, that's the, the end point. Work backwards, figure out how many, what, the, what return you're looking for, how many properties you need, how much you need to raise in terms of deposits for that, where that money's gonna come from, and then work the plan. So if it's, you need seven properties or 10 properties to get that to that 50 grand or 75 grand or whatever number it is, then just work backwards, work out how much deposit you need, whether it's your money or somebody else's money, just get to business, get to work, and make the plan happen. It really is that simple. But if you're just buying randomly here, there, wherever, trying different areas, trying different strategies, and to hoping some of it's gonna stick. Well, it might do, but it's not the best way to do these things, and I would avoid that. And that leads me on very nicely to the next one, which is your property strategy. I think it's fantastic if you have uh, money invested in more than one property strategy, but unfortunately, sometimes people dabble in different ones. So they'll do service accommodation, and HMOs, and single lets, and they might want to be a deal sourcer and do commercial conversions and new builds, for example, and they're doing one of each. Yeah, and personally, I, th I think there's no harm in testing them, but be sure on one at least at the start. And I think get to know that really well. So if you're, let's say, doing commercial conversions, do two or three commercial conversions first. I mean, once you've done two or three, I don't think you're going to do anything else, by the way, uh, based on experience and what others do as well. But you might think, well, I, I, I like this, but I want, I want to diversify. Oh, service accommodation sounds good, so I'll do a conversion, but I'll change it into uh, uh, service accommodation as opposed to single lets. Well, that's fine, you can do that later, but don't dabble in different strategies, because we're always looking for the next that shiny uh, object syndrome, uh, which is uh, what's new, what's different. Uh, and we're not able to make as much progress as we ought to, so learn one strategy, get to know it inside out, implement it, see how it works, and once you're pretty comfortable, confident on it, if you think that's your kind of your 70% strategy, then find the next 20% one, then the next 10% one. That's much better than trying different ones and having one service accommodation unit, one HMO, a couple of single lets, one commercial conversion. It's a scattergun approach, stay focused. So with strategies, the big and key word is make sure you are focused, because focus is gonna help you achieve the results that you want. The next one is a big one. 
and that is stop being cheap if you are cheap i see this too often and i say this as an advisor as, as an advisor i mean uh, an accountant and a tax advisor i see people skimp on fees all the time can i find a cheaper uh, architect can i find a cheaper planning consultant can i find a cheaper accountant cheap does not equate to good as john ruskin said it's unwise to pay too much but it's worse to pay too little when you pay too much you may lose a little when you pay too little you sometimes lose everything because the thing you paid for isn't capable of doing the thing you bought it to do and then you've wasted all your money so what i would say was see who's the best person i can afford to pay for in terms of doing this particular job for me whether it's a planning consultant whether it's an accountant solicitor a contractor whoever it is uh, your site manager pay the best and the highest fee you can because people usually charge what they think they're worth now some people some think they're worth more than what they charge some but most of the time you get what you pay for so don't skimp on fees i can give you example after example of ex after example where i've paid kind of top money for really good advisors and every single time at the start of maybe i'm paying you know, too much here but but i still go through the process at the end i think that was money well spent i'm glad i did that uh, and that applies to all types of services whatever you do of course if you're buying product for example as a tangible and you're buying let's say roof tiles it's pretty similar two different suppliers one one's selling the tiles for say 1.50 each another one of 135 each of course you're going to go with the 135 one if all other things being equal in terms of uh, supply and quality but with services especially because they're intangible people say oh i paid this lawyer 500 pounds and i'm not gonna pay that one 1500 pounds because i'm gonna go for the cheaper one and the cheap one might be as good but usually it does cost people money i'm sharing that with you based on experience more experience of what others have told me and, and when they've come to me with problems as opposed to my own hard experiences so don't skimp on fees get the best people that you can because i'm telling you they're going to look after you they're going to give you good service but most importantly they're going to save you a lot of money or they're going to help you make money so it's important you don't skimp on fees so if you're new to the channel click the subscribe button so we can send you all the content on a regular basis if you like this video click like so i know you like it because i like likes and if you've got any questions or comments in the comments box below post any question you like and i'll happily answer the question for you and if you have a particular topic you want me to cover in terms of property or for tax put it in the comments box and i'll do my best either to answer the question or to make a video for you and my last one which is by far my favorite i'm just going to put down nmd and hopefully you know what nmd stands for which is pretty much no money down so you want to get to a stage where you're working with other people and you're not using your own money now some say oh this is impossible you can't work all nonsense i'm doing this on a regular basis look at my other videos here and the different projects i've done i'm using no money down and being an accountant i'm very logical and rational and there are, there's a point in my life where i thought no money down total nonsense this is not workable Hi, why would somebody give me money uh, and then i soon forget out, hold a moment someone's got money they haven't got the time i've got the time and expertise so they give me the money my expertise and we form a partnership and work together it doesn't have to be a partnership by the way i use the word loosely it could be a joint venture where you work on one particular project but we could do stuff together and you know what hey presto it worked so you want to get to a stage where you can use other people's money because this is helpful in many different ways one is you've only got a limited amount of cash we all have therefore you want to use other people to create more cash other people have cash they haven't got the time so you're helping them gain some financial freedom you're helping them gain a return on investment so you're making it better for them whoever they may be and for yourself you can do more deals you're creating more jobs you're paying more tax because obviously you're creating more profit you're creating more passive income financial freedom you can make a bigger difference in people's lives in your own life and some of those funds you can use to give to charities or whatever you want to do with that money so there's so many benefits but you gotta kind of scale up to a stage where you feel comfortable and just using your own money where buying a single let every year two years three years is really slow and painful i think if you feel comfortable with that and that's your strategy and that's what you want to do who am i to say otherwise 
But I would say, if you're ambitious and you want to move forward and you want to do bigger things, then involve other people, give them half, or 50%, use their funds, use your expertise, and move forward. This was a whole total game changer for me. It helped me scale up from doing really small projects to doing really big projects. Right now, I'm working in Bicca, building 40 new houses. I've never built 40 new houses before. First one, the previous new build that I've been involved in was five two-bedroom, uh, three two-bedroom flats and two two-bedroom masonettes, so five two-bedroom units. From five, jump to 40. And this is part of the reason that helped me do that because I had access to the funding from investors, so we moved quickly and made a big, massive leap and you can do the same. So these are six things I think you ought not to do, okay? And with no money down, obviously, don't use your own money, by the way, as opposed to NMD. So don't use your own money, use other people's money. But these are the six things I think you should be acutely aware of, because most people make these mistakes along their journey. And if you can stop making these mistakes and avoid them, you're gonna be more successful a lot quicker.